Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a problem to work on number theory technique. This is a problem which I suggest you try out for a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally 30 minutes, but not more than an hour. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you give it a 5 minute try and put your first ideas out on paper. So now, without further ado, let's begin. So the problem asks us to find x and y such that both of these, where x and y are non-negative integers, such that both of these are perfect squares. So now, here's the technique part. We know this, if they're both perfect squares, non-negative integers, then, okay, just like, let's do the case x equals zero, or y equals zero. If x is zero, then free y and y squared both need to be squares. Okay, this is already a square. And then y needs to be of the form free t squared. And that gives us the results zero and free t squared for any and of course symmetrically for x. But now let's assume both of them are greater than or equal to 1. And then this square, both of these squares are greater than or equal to the next one. And the next one is, so x plus 1 squared needs to be less than or equal to x squared plus 3y. And, now, and the opposite holds for this, which means like y plus 1 squared needs to be less than or equal to y squared plus 3x. Now these two imply 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 3y. And we have 2y plus 1 is less than or equal to 3x. And now, these are important bounding things. Like, this is at least needs to be greater than or equal to this. It could be worse than this. So now the technique part that people use to, like, solve these more quickly is they say, okay, these are symmetric. So without loss of generality, let's let x be greater than or equal to y. And then I'll be able to bound x from this side. Or maybe I'll be able to bind, bound y from this side. Because what happens now? This is true, by definition. But this thing right here isn't always true, is it? Like, that bounds x. It tells us that x is less than or equal to 3y minus 1 over 2, which is very nice because now x is bounded from both sides. You could also say x is squeezed from both sides. And now this tells you sort of what x can be, sort of what x can be in relation to y just by you knowing this. It tells you what square this thing right here can be. For example, we know that x plus 2 squared is going to be greater than or equal to x squared plus 3y. Actually, strictly greater than, and this is going to be true if and only if 4x plus 4 is greater than 3y, which is true because this implies that x plus 4 plus 3 times x minus y is greater than 0, which is true because we assumed without loss of generality that x is greater than or equal to y. So now we know this can't be true. This is greater than x squared. So this thing right here must be equal to x plus 1 squared because it's the only square between x squared and x plus 2 squared. And this thing right here is really the technique that I want to show you. So now with this, that implies that 3y is equal to 2x plus 1. And now with that, can we apply that in our other thing in this problem right here? So we have... We have y squared plus 3x must also be a square. Now we can't really do any that much bounding here, but now we can switch one of these things. And now this is also a matter of technique. We can say that, okay, we can like put this as y plus t squared. And then we have 2ty plus t squared is equal to 3x. We have this and this, both hold for x. And now we can solve for t and y. That's one way of doing this. Another way of doing the same thing, I mean a similar thing, would be, well, this means that y needs to be odd. So let y be equal to 2z plus 1. And now what we have, we'll have that 6z plus 3 is 2x plus 1. 3 becomes a 2. Divide by 2, we have 3z plus 1 is equal to x. If I'm not mistaken, yes, this is great. And now we plug that in here. We see that we, we will have 2z plus 1 squared plus 3 times 3z plus 1 is going to be equal to some square. Now we can even plug that into here. So now that will give us that 2 times t times what's y? y is 2z plus 1 plus t squared is going to be equal to 9z plus 3. And now this is also, this gives us a bound on what t can be. Because mind you, we have 4zt plus 2t plus t squared on this side. 
and here you have 9z. So this means that t needs to be less than 3, otherwise this side will be greater than this side. So now we just have a couple of cases, and let's now solve them. So what do we have? We have that 2t, two 2z two plus 1 plus t squared is equal to 9z plus 3. Now this implies t is less than 3. So now we have two cases, t is equal to 1 or 2. If t is equal to 1, we will have 2 times 2z plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 9z plus 3. And I don't think this will work out very well because 4z plus 3 is equal to 9z plus 3. I think what we'll get here, yeah, we'll get that z is equal to 0. And then I think that implies y is equal to 1. And now what is x? x is equal to what? 3y, 2x plus 1 is equal to 3y. And now this implies x is 1. And this is a solution, like we have four, we'll have 4 on both sides. And the other thing is, if t is equal to 2, then what do we have? We have that 4, 8, 8z plus what? Plus 2t, 2t is going to be 4 plus t squared plus 4 is equal to 9z plus 3. And now bam, 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 z is equal to 5. This implies that y is equal to 11. And now from 3, y is equal to 2x plus 1. What do we get? We get, actually we could have just done like z is equal to what? 3z plus 1 is equal to x. So x is equal to 16. And now let's double check to make sure that we haven't made any mistake algebraically. And the thing is we haven't made any mistake because we have 16 squared plus 3 times 11 is equal to 17 squared. And we have that 11 squared plus 3 times 16 is equal to 13 squared, both of which are true. And now this gives us all our answers, really. It gives us the answers, what? We had 0 and 3t squared. We had the answer, what? 11 and 16. And we had the answer, 1, 1. And these are all the answers with permutation. Now, the trick that I wanted, the technique I wanted to show you here, really, was this sort of squeezing of what the values can be. When you find numbers that need to be squared, you can maybe squeeze them between two squares or cubed. Like a similar principle applies to other problems. This is a valid technique. It's used somewhat often. It's good to know. And this finishes our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.